Divine Grace, A.C. Bhakti Vedanta, Goswami Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai, Ananta Koti Vaishnava Rinda Ki Jai, Yuskan Pandra Charja Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai, Nama Charja Srila Haridas Thakur Ki Jai, Prem Shekaho Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Adwaita Gadadhar Sri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Ki Jai, Sri Sri Radha Krishna Gogopinadha Shama Kunda Radha Kunda Giri Govardhana Ki Jai, Sri Sri Vrindavan Dhamma Ki Jai, Sri Snabhadeep Dhamma Ki Jai, Sri Sri Mayapur Dhamma Ki Jai, all glories to the assembled devotees, all glories to the assembled devotees, all glories to the assembled devotees, all glories to Sri Sri Guru and Sri Gauranga. We're reading from the Srimad Bhagavatam, the third canto, the twelfth chapter. What, what's the name of the verse? Number of the verse? What is it? Forty-six. Maya Jaha Pankirun Patna. Maya Pankir Utpana Prihat Pranato Bhavat Prihati Pranato Bhavat Majaya Pankir Putapa Prihati Pranato Bhavat Majaya Pankir Utpana Prihati Pranato Bhavat Maya ja, from the bone marrow. Pankitihi, a particular type of verse. Utpana, became manifested. Rihat, another type of verse. Pranataha, out of the life breathing. Abhavat, generated. Translation, the art of writing verse, Pankti, became manifest from the bone marrow, and that of the Brihati, another type of verse, was generated from the life breath and Lord 
of the living entities. I'll read the verse again, uh, responsibly. First, the art of writing prose, Pankti, became manifested from the bone marrow, from the bone marrow. and that of Brihati, that of Brihati. Another, type of another type of verse, was generated from the life breath, the life breath of, the Lord, of the Lord, of the living entities. The, living entities. the verse again, the art of writing verse, the art of writing verse, Pankita, Pank, Pank, uh, Pankti, became manifested from the bone marrow. And that of the Brihati, another type of verse, was generated from the life breath, the Lord of the living entities. Um, so we're learning from this uh, verse that uh, the Lord Brahma is all powerful and, and pervading. And he's, in, in a sense, uh, he's, he's Bhagavan. He's not the same as Krishna, but he's, he's invested with the power of Krishna to create the universe. So he created uh, many different things. He created the uh, sense of, of crime, the sense of, of, of doing well, the sense of, of murder, the sense of, of uh, eating, a sense of everything he created. So in a sense, everything is coming from Lord Brahma, uh, originally from Krishna, but he invest, because he invested Lord Brahma with the power of creativity, he, uh, he created the universe. And he created all things within this universe, including all these things that are unpleasant in the universe. Um, one of the things he, he created was the, the, the sex drive, and he became a victim of, of it himself when he uh, found, uh, when he found that, that uh, he was lusting after his own daughter. And, and Prabhupada, in a, in a previous purport, he writes that, that there's a, a uh, a message behind this this thing. Of course, uh, Brahma uh, eventually relinquished that body because he he felt that he shouldn't have that, and uh, and uh, it became that that body became fog and darkness. <clears throat> and then he created a, a, in another kalpa in another lifetime he created another verse. So he's all powerful and has that that powerful. Sometimes he is uh, visible. Sometimes he is not visible. Sometimes he's manifest and sometimes he is not manifest. When he is not manifest, uh, like to to most of us, we can't see him. But there's images of Lord Brahma everywhere. There's statues. Even in in Las Vegas, in front of one of the casinos, there's a statue of Lord Brahma. I don't know if it was solid gold or gold plated, but he had four heads, and it was it was Lord Brahma. So the purpose behind the, this exhibition of of his uh, lusting after his own daughter was that he was chasing after her, and uh, he was, uh, it was arranged by Krishna that he would pass in front of many, uh, many uh, wise sages, and they saw even the Lord Brahma could, uh, could succumb to, to sexual desire. So then, then they started to think for themselves that this is a very dangerous thing, and it has to be abolished. So the, 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 uh, one of the points is that Lord Brahma uh, is not is not the same as Krishna, I and mean, he's invested with the same powers as Krishna, but he's not the same in the sense that that he's not identical with the Lord. He doesn't have a blue body. He doesn't have all the all the attributes that Krishna has. Uh, so this is Lord Brahma, and and the other thing about Lord Brahma that's mentioned in in uh, in one of the uh, purports, and I think it's in a, in a lecture too, is that he doesn't have the same powers that Krishna have. He has only I think it's 78 percent, and that uh, that all of us can can achieve that if if we're very fortunate and very uh, very persistent. So Lord Brahma, although he's very powerful, sometimes he he makes mistakes, and this was a mistake when uh, Prabhupada was walking. He this was brought up to him, but how could someone who's the head of our sampradaya, who's the the creator of the universe, have have this kind of a fall down, and and it was sort of uh, dismissed by Prabhupada as being well, the, uh, Lord Brahma is is a living entity. He's not he's not fully uh, fully empowered to, to uh, engage in all in all the things that that uh, that I engage in. So Prabhupada kind of dismissed it, and uh, so the, the the Lord Brahma has great power. And in, in a sense that he's the most powerful person in the whole universe because he created this universe. Um, and everything that he created is, 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 uh, is, is we find today, like there's airplanes, there's submarines, uh, there's, there's uh, telephones, there's, there's medicine, and, and all these things that we think are so great were actually created by, uh, by Lord Brahma. And uh, uh, by Lord Krishna originally, so they had the power to fly. They had the power to walk on water or or go underwater, and and uh, this is mentioned in the in the uh, 
nectar of devotion that there are different types of uh, of, uh, 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 of, of perfections that the devotees, especially the, the yogis, can exercise. They can reach all the way to the moon with one hand. They can reach for a, uh, a, f a flower or a fruit in, in a very distant part of the world. They can do many great things. And, and uh, so these things that we think are so wonderful were, were actually, have always existed. And they existed in the Vedic era. era. There were airplanes uh, that they, they didn't rattle. They didn't make a lot of noise. They 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 they, uh, uh, they, they didn't jump around. They didn't have they, they didn't experience air pockets, and uh, and so there were many things that that we think are so wonderful and so great that were already mentioned. And they had many different kinds of medicines to cure all kinds of diseases. They could even bring the dead back to life, and 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 when the uh, Lord. Chaitanya was battling with Ravana. There was a a, 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 a case where some of his uh, soldiers were temporarily disabled by the weapons of of, uh, of Brahma, and uh, and and Hanuman went all the way to the to the Himalayas to get medicine from. Uh, there were certain plants that had. Uh, Capable capabilities of remedying diseases. So they were. Uh, Hanuman went to this distant place in the Himalayas. Came back. There's a famous picture of Hanuman carrying what looks like a mountain on his right hand, or his left hand. And uh, and so these these soldiers were revived because they they were given these medicines. So the, these medicines that we have today are considered to be very valuable, but in a sense they're nothing compared to the medicines of the past that could bring the dead back to life. Uh, that that happened several times. The dead were brought back to life, and people who were snake bitten were revived by special herbs that were were made from the the plants that were available in those days. So, in a sense, everything that we do, everything that we know, everything that we were aware of, is is has already been done, and it's already been invented. It's already been created by Lord Brahma. So in the academic world, we have this concept of plagiarism. Plagiar plagiarism, I think it comes from a Latin word meaning to steal. And uh, so uh, we have a United Nations, but, uh, and we have, a, uh, we have Australia, we have the United States, we have England, and we think they're very great. But uh, these uh, parts of, of, the, of, of the planet, these earthen parts of the planet have always existed. And uh, they're, not, they're not so great. As as uh, as the universe is, and and uh, Lord uh, uh, Mahavishnu is very powerful because he can create and he can just by breathing he can create and destroy whole universes. So this this uh, concept of plagiarism is is kind of is is like taking the, in, in in the academic world if you if you uh, quote some other author or a person, you, you can be guilty of plagiarism. But in a sense, we're all guilty of plagiarism because we're all claiming that Australia is my country, the United States is my country, England is my country. Uh, so we're all stealing. And, and the United Nations is, uh, is also stealing. They're, they're, the, uh, they're, they're trying to obtain peace in the world, but uh, there's no such thing. They're fighting in, 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 in South of India, they're, they're fighting in, in Israel, fighting in, 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 in parts of Ukraine. So there's, there's all kinds of, of uh, trouble going on, even though uh, we, we're hoping against hope that, that, that it's not going to affect us, but it is. It's, uh, it's, it's definitely affecting us. Um, and, and uh, many, many sadhus and incarnations like Lord Rama have appeared and have, have, have had a mission to obtain. One, one, uh, we hear about Lord Brahma, uh, Lord Buddha, for example. He came to to uh, alleviate the the uh, unnecessary killing of animals through ahimsa, uh, and and so he had a special purpose to achieve in in his appearance. And it's also written in the in the uh, Srimad Bhagavatam, and also it's in the Nectar Devotion, not Srimad Bhagavatam, but the Nectar Devotion. It's written that the the uh, wives of the demigods prayed for the appearance of Lord Buddha because they knew that Lord Buddha was going to abolish not all but most of the sacrifices and these sacrifices were attended by their husbands so they felt that if uh, they could get Lord Buddha to come and and uh, uh, and uh, and and uh, relinquish these these uh, very very powerful uh, ways of life or uh, 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 yagyas 
that they would stay stay with their their spouses and they would be 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 at home all the time. So that's one of the reasons for Lord Buddha's appearance that we don't hear about so often. But it's it's actually written in the in the nectar of devotion. Um, there was a, a a case where you know, you probably don't know this, and I, I talked about this on on, on one of the. Uh, uh, videos that I'm doing with Vishnu John about how the land that, that the, the Krishna Balaram temple was built on was 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 obtained. When um, Gunarnava was here, he mentioned that the the, the front part of the land that there's a 54 feet of frontage on on the land uh, was was uh, reserved by the the husband of the the person who owns the land. Saying that because he he wanted she she said that he wanted to have shops there so he could earn some extra money. So when they went to uh, Matura to sign the deed, he didn't go because he didn't want to sign a, a uh, off on a property that he wasn't going to have that much control over to have the shops. But they, it went ahead anyway. And what happened was there's a a, a, a devotee named uh, Gita um, Baba, huh? Saran. Devi, uh, um, Gita Devi Sarat, and she uh, lived. She and her husband were residents of Vrindavan. They lived in Vrindavan for many years, and the house that uh, that that they lived in had rooms one after the other, like in in in, in railroads. There were like seven rooms one after the other, and uh, Prabhupada uh, wanted this property very much, and he spoke to uh, to uh, Gita Devi Bhavat about about uh, she he and he said that that why don't you donate this land to us? This is a very nice piece of land. And her husband was there and he said, well, it's, it's a little bit too far away. I mean, his, he had other motives, but he said it's too far away from the city of Vrindavan, from the center of Vrindavan. And he said, that's all right. Prabhupada said, that's all right, because Krishna and, and Balaram played there in, in, the, in the sacred sands of, 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 of Raman Reti. So, so if you can give it to us as a donation, it would be very nice. Of course, if you want to sell it, you can sell it to us and we'll buy it. We'll buy it at any price, he said to her. And this is, uh, part of this is, is written in a book by Mula Prakriti called Our Prabhupada, um, the friend of all, and in, in Shama Sundar's book about chasing rhinos with the Swami. So uh, Prabhupada went into room number three. There was uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven or eight rooms, or seven rooms. And, uh, and while he was in that room, he was with uh, a number of devotees. He was with Shem Sundar, he was with um, uh, Malani, he was with a few other people were there. And, they were, and, and he assigned this devotee named Shirodakshai Vishnu to negotiate the whole uh, property transfer. But anyway, he went there and Kirodaksha had come a three, a three or four days earlier. Uh, and and tried to uh, negotiate, and he was waiting for this this uh, Gita Devi to come back, as she was in another part of the world. So he was, he and then while he was in there, uh, this the devotee named Shamama, who was a bit older, Vaishnava, a drum player and a, and a, and a 60-year-old uh, woman, said that she was very angry, and she she said to to Gita uh, uh, Devi, you, but you promised me the land. And so there was an, uh, an argument that took place in the Hindi language. I don't know all of it, but she was very disturbed. She was accusing the, the, uh, the Sarat people, and, and the Sarat people were defending themselves. So this went on for quite a while. There was a long argument. And then Prabhupada interrupted by saying, he said, okay, I want you, uh, Shama Mataji, and, and the people you came with, the retired parliamentarian and policeman, to, to wait for me in room number five. Go there, and I will be there shortly. Of course, he didn't actually come, and Shamama was very disturbed, and she went, she didn't wait, she went home. But the other two people, the retired Marmitarian and, and policeman, they, uh, they waited, and Prabhupada didn't show up. So then he was going from one room to the other to the other, and, and, and Gita Devi and her, uh, uh, was in another room. So he was going from one room to the other, and Prabhupada said he was, called him the ringmaster, like the ringmaster in a circus that goes to different places and negotiates with people in different places. So eventually, uh, the, the land was given. I don't know if it was donated or if it was paid for, but the, 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 and what happened was, they were supposed to sign a deed and they the, the finalized the deed in, in Mathura. But what happened was Prabhupada knew a man who was a judge in Mathura. So he actually came there. And what usually takes months and months to, to negotiate a property transfer was done in, in about three days. The whole, the whole property was transferred over to Prabhupada. And there was later on some, some uh, 
chicanery that went on. There was that someone overnight had dug up the the the, the pit that Prabhupada had had uh, put the Seshanaga in, and they destroyed the 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 uh, ISKCON sign. And and it's never been proven who was behind it or who did it, but their suspicions do remain. Um, Anyway, this this all happened in, in a matter of three days, and then but they still still had to go to Vrindavan or to uh, um, to uh, to the Mathura to, to sign off and, and and finalize the whole thing. So it was all done, and 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 three things were achieved. One was that the cornerstone was laid down in the ground. Uh, the second thing was that the rooms that that Prabhupada had in in Radhadamanar were given to him in perpetuity. And the third thing was that uh, that, uh, that that the Prabhupada owned the land. That that, that whole the, over one acre of land was designated for Srila Prabhupada, and and uh, so then the, then the construction began. And 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 that man wasn't uh, allowed to have the, the 54 feet of, of land for frontage for his shops. He was a little uh, upset about that, but that's what happened. And so a beautiful temple was erected, as as some of you have have uh, been there. You know what it's like, and it was uh, all, all done by. Prabhupada's ingenious way of dealing with uh, all the people that owned the land and then and the people that wanted the land and other people and he was going back and forth from one room to the other uh, and to acquire the land and they acquired the land and, and uh, this was his expertise he was an expert at uh, at minimizing or euphemizing things that were ordinarily very disturbing or very upsetting. He was very good at, so he convinced everyone that he should get the land, and they got the land, they got the cornerstone laid, they got the rooms in perpetuity, and the, the, the reason that there was an objection about him having those rooms in, in forever was that the, the, the people that owned the rooms, the, the Goswamis in Radhadamadar temple, wanted to uh, to limit Prabhupada, and they, 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 they didn't get along with each other. They, there was some kind of a, a long, a, a very very old, uh, long dispute between these people that were part of the Nityananda Vamsa group, and uh, Prabhupada. Um, uh, part of the deal was that that, 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 that that all of the land would be used for preaching Krishna consciousness, and that and that the rooms would be. That there were two rooms that he would have in the Radhadar temple. They would be his forever, for in perpetuity. So he accomplished all those things with that judge, and the judge made everything official, signed everything. And then they went to Vrindavan and uh, went to Mathura and finalized everything. So um, I'll read the verse again. The art of writing verse, Pankti, became manifest from the bone marrow. And that of Brihat, another type of verse, was generated from the life breath of the Lord, of the living entities. So we think that there are great poets like Alexander Pope and Shakespeare that, that did a lot of great things and wrote a lot of great things. But all these things had actually been done before. They had been created by Lord Brahma. All the, the uh, poetry and the verses, they, they were known to him. And, and, and uh, Rupa Goswami was so astute at, at, uh, at, at the Sanskrit language that he could write things that would be read the same way forward and backward. In the English, they call them palindromes. In, in, in English, there's very few. Uh, there's one called, uh, hey, uh, hi, madam, I'm Adam. So it can be read backwards and forwards, at, and it reads the same way. So that's basically what a palindrome is, and 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 uh, Rupa Goswami was in that in that uh, mood of of uh, writing palindromes, and they they were actually created by Lord Rama, who created the entire universe and all the different kinds of poetry and and uh, fiction that we that we're so proud of. So if there's, uh, I'm going to read the verse again and then ask if there's any questions. The art of writing verse, Pankti, became manifested from the bone marrow and that of Brihati, another type of verse, was generated from the life breath of the Lord of the living entities. So any, any uh, comments or questions about the verse or anything that, uh, that, that's been said? No questions or comments? Then I think we'll, we'll end. We're, we're a little bit early, but I saved some time so there would be time for questions. But since there's no questions, we'll end right now. Thank you. Unless uh, you had a question? No? Okay. Hare Krishna. It's one of the Shamukunda Maharaj's key. Yeah.